Welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio with host Jennifer Hillman. The show explores and reveals the human potential through creativity. So enjoy the show to create a life you love. You were talking about that you wrote your song, When I Say These Words, through your observations of friends who are really kind of miserable in the relationships because of the lack of communication. Is that a good way of putting it, summarizing it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, um, do you feel that your songs are giving them a hint that if they change their communication, things might be a little different? You know, I, w- I would like to hope that uh, some of my music, um, that uh, they find their words that maybe they're lacking. Um, that's probably uh, too much to ask, but um, I-, I would like for them to take a listen and to say, wow, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. And, and, you know, yes, this can be done or, or you know, I-, I need to change this. Or I need to say exactly how I feel, or I need to express myself better, you know. Um, so I'm hoping that some of these songs they can make it into their own, and say, okay, yeah, these are the words that I couldn't find, you know. It's interesting. I was um, watching recently a clip of Frank Sinatra when he was the host for the Grammys. Yes. And he was actually saying that music is one of those, as you would say, universal communicators, that it, it really can be the, the vehicle so you can say and express how you're feeling or what's going on in a situation through either the music itself or the lyrics. And it's really beautiful that, you know, it's music is such a timely and timeless communicators of feelings for humanity. Exactly. And um, I think sometimes people find uh, closure through music also. You know, uh, maybe after a, a decision to to end a relationship, basically. And this is what, um, when I say these words, is really uh, about. Um letting go, you know, and saying, if it's your freedom that you seek, then you may go. Um, but leave what belongs to me and, uh, you know, go and, and make your world, basically, you know. Uh, those are so so real, you know, those words. I'm sure people have said them so many times. Um, and, and sometimes a song, I think, can give closure. You know, it's like, okay, finally, you know, okay, it's done. Um and that's it. Yeah, you know? it, it's, and it's so many people, that is the hardest thing, number one, to really communicate, especially if the relationship has been one that you break up, you get back together, you break up, you get back together, and yeah, and, and it goes back and forth and back and forth, and it, it can be really a wicked game in that sense. Yes, yes. And, and our songs help us express our... Um, hidden thoughts, our secret thoughts, you know, those little, those little, you know, second conversations that we have with each other, uh, with ourselves, basically, and, um, you know, we, we reaffirm things to ourselves, but they're secret, because we don't say them to anyone, but I think this is when, when I'm writing a particular song, uh, this helps me uh, kind of spill out those secrets those that everyone has, really, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it. there's so many ways that each song is a story all wrapped up, uh, beginning, middle, and end. And yet, at the same time, as it can help bring closure, it can also give you so much hope and reopening for the new beginnings, for not giving up. Right. Right, on your exactly. s- on a relationship or even on yourself yeah and and even if it's the most difficult thing that you've ever done 
that life still happens and life still goes on, you know, and, and you're a part of this life. And um, one just doesn't know what uh, what's around the corner, you know. So we have to take hope. So is there one song that you think is the best song you or really is a song that gives you a lot of hope? Hmm, that's a that's a really hard question, Jennifer. <laughs> that song that gives me a lot of hope. Um, wow. Well, I think um, um, there's a song that's called "What It Feels Like." Now, that song, uh, I believe you are going to play. Um, yes. Now, what it feels like really is a story about about a, a man who is uh, who has these strong feelings for 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 this woman and he observes how how others want her to be but he finds her beauty in in those quiet moments that she doesn't speak that she doesn't say anything and uh, he describes it as it feels like snow and so his feelings he's saying are pure like snow what i feel for you is like snow like falling snow quiet soft gentle and as it falls it begins to change everything it doesn't look the same anymore and th that's uh that's what this song is about
it's it's a wonderful metaphor. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I think that also is a secret thought. And I think uh, probably many men have carried that thought that they would like to say to someone, you know, what I feel for you, this is what it feels like to me. This is the only way I could express it, you know. As a man, you would, at, at least you can write a song or write a poem and and express yourself. What do you think is the main reason why men, in a way, get tongue-tied? I believe that we, we're conditioned, really, from when we're young, really, that men don't really talk. You know, men don't learn how to express uh, themselves because women do that. And uh, and I think maybe some of that is changing now, though. I, you know, I think I think men are realizing that uh, that doesn't work anymore and that women um, expect more. Women want to know our deepest thoughts, our deepest feelings, our dreams, our fears, our hopes, you know. And it's not okay just to go in the garage and to... Uh, pound at something because you're upset you know go and work on the car go mm -hmm. build something because you are upset and you're not going to talk about it in time you will, will, will make it okay it doesn't work like that anymore I don't think do you um, feel like there's words or a song that um, express what men might be repressing other things like the anger or the frustration or the not knowing how to say it just right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, and I think that comes with practice. I think uh, uh, men should should really begin using a lot of those words that, you know, many men don't use in, in phrases and in sentences <laughs> because I think we feel uh, we become vulnerable. And, and we don't want to be vulnerable because we are, you know, from, from childhood, we're taught, we have to be tough, you know, you're tough, man. You know, if, if, if something hurts you, you don't cry and talk about it. You, you go for a 10 mile run, <laughs> you know, you climb a mountain, you know, and things like that. Um, and so I, I think we need to just re rewire the brain, you know, and, and start using, um, sweet language you know a uh, tender language and and maybe being more colorful you know painting better pictures of, of our feelings and uh, I don't think you can go wrong doing that do you think that um, from your observation do you see more men being more expressive and being able to open up that creative side to really get in touch with their their inner child and allow it to play or do you think the conditions and the seemingly endless fear base that is around them keeping them more repressed and you got to be tough and you got to be carrying that big gun and not really <laughs> be that vulnerable yeah, exactly. I have big guns, you know, and uh, I shoot them too. But uh, I'm, I, you got to have a balance. You have to have a balance, you know. And um, I think that there's a lot of fear, you know, and it, it just goes back to 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 conditioning, you know. But I think there's a big struggle. There's a big struggle. Struggle. We we want to, you know, but it's it's hard, you know. I've come across many musicians that when they're on stage. You know, they put out these these songs, this, and, and it's great. But then when they get off stage, they're very shy and they don't speak. You know, so I'm thinking, hmm, this is very, very strange. You know, that on stage they can say so many things, but to have just a regular conversation with someone, it's costly. It's very difficult for them. It, you know, it, something's wrong. It's interesting how... Um... It's like an alter ego mm -hmm. for a lot of, of things. Yes. That, you know, it's it's interesting that to me, I, I mean, I have written um, on one website that it is a totally different name. It's um, 
but I do it only because it is an aspect of me that is, I think, more romantic. Yeah. Sounding name, and that's why when I'm doing more of the romantic side of me, um, the sensual side, that I tend to write under that pen name. But it's it's interesting that people and a lot of musicians even change their name or shorten their name for their career. Yeah. To and I think it's for a few reasons. Partly for you know having that stage name and that presence, but I also get that in some ways it does give them kind of that shelter. By not Correct. using their whole name for the privacy, it doesn't right. always it doesn't always work. But <laughs> it's true, it doesn't always work. But it, that's that's you know one of the main reasons that people use a different name. But it helps you uh, just be that become that person. You create that person under that name, basically, right? Right. Um, back to your music. You have a, another song that you would like to play called "You Are the Only Reason." What's the inspiration for that song? So when I was listening to You're the Only Reason, um, it really reminded me of David Gray's Babylon, um, which is one of my favorite songs of David Gray's. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Do you ever get concerned, you know, with, there's so much music and there's going to be overlap, especially now that there's so many people suing because a song sounds like another song. You know, um, I don't get concerned because that, that's going to happen eventually. Um, I've never really listened to a lot of uh, David Gray's music and until someone else had mentioned that. I went on and I uh, took a listen. But uh, sometimes there are similarities. Sometimes the beginning of songs... Um, sometimes uh, the endings maybe and even some lyrics but you know um, I think that we're talking about universal lyrics many times too and sometimes you hear the same thing being said uh, okay. often right so I ima imagine the words I love you um, <laughs> how yeah. many songs have the words I love you or oh, I've lost you uh, now that I found you for example things like that right um, so yeah, I think sometimes you can, uh, um, you can have similarities and, uh, you know, I think it's, it, I think it's good. I think it shows that it's good music. <laughs> yeah. I take it as a compliment. Um, yeah, so, me too. So it's just, that is something that I find being very challenging these days yeah. is, um, when you listen to one song. Um, and, and, and you know, um, you have many, many hip hop and rappers, I believe, that did use music and, and all they do is put lyrics to it and they change it. But the music is the same. Right. From they other artists. It. Yeah, they remix of course. it. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, right? and it's yeah. and there's sampling and, yeah. and and there's a lot of anyway on to other things. So we're, we're now going to be playing. You're the only one. You're the only reason, excuse me. Yes. And I 
again, a lot of similarities, but slightly different, which is great. Um, it broadens um, music, that's for sure. And it's interesting that you have written so many. How many songs have you written up to date? Do you have an idea? <laughs> Because you know, every, um, every time I turn around, it's like, he's written five more songs. Yeah, right, right. Does he ever get tired? <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, I do, and so I take a break, and I and I do other things, right? But it's all, all in the creative format, right? But, um, you know, I, I've lost track how many songs I've, uh, I've, uh, I've written. And um, there have been some, some computer crashes, and... Uh, you know, um, equipment failure that I've lost me hundreds also. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, this last song, uh, You're the Only Reason. Um, and I should say, the title is You're the Only Reason That I'm Here. But I shortened it because that's just way too long. And basically, that was written for my wife, Elena. And, um, you know, everyone when I first went to Spain, would ask me, why are you here? You know, what what made you come here? Why, why are you here? And um, it kind of um, helped me, you know, having to answer all those questions, you know, why? To write this song, you know, you're the only reason that I'm here. And which is true. It's, it's just autobiographical. You're the only reason that I'm here. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> there is no other reason. Yeah, really. Um but also there there is you know the the love that you and Alana share is really quite beautiful it it was a long distance relationship mm -hmm. for a while before yeah. you guys were able to actually meet and it, so it, it it's a pretty amazing story yeah you know i think it was and and um you know, it's 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 good, and once the butterflies were off, um, you realize what you're into, you know, and it's and and it gets better and better every time. So I congratulate you because a lot of people would not be able to make that work, and um, she's a beautiful poet in her own right. Yes, she is, um, and a lovely lady, and I feel really she's a treasure, and I really thank you for the introduction to her as well so thanks and you know she uh mentioned you and uh she wanted me to say hello to you and uh i was waiting for you to come of course yes and i'll get over there yeah. um so when you first got to spain did you <clears throat> feel the magic or did you feel overwhelmed did you did it inspire your music do you think <clears throat> excuse me um yeah, it actually, uh, it actually did. You know, uh, I, I felt uh, pretty inspired uh, by many different things, uh, just uh, the landscape, um, and 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 being far away from the states. I think um, the people, people are cool, um, very interesting. Um, different places that we visited, of course. Uh, she likes to travel a little, and we we get out quite a bit. Um, but um, I think it was the the silence, the uh, uh, feeling like you know I can walk through a street and uh, I'm just I, I'm 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 just this person that um, doesn't belong there. Almost, you know, you feel like that. You feel like this is not my place, and so that kind of um, gives you a little freedom, I think. And for me, it it uh, it allowed me to write. Um, different things and uh a lot of music a lot of music so um that that was a good thing now you have been recently in the <clears throat> states visiting mm -hmm. um do you have any plans to do any more gigs in the future in europe or are you mainly just you've got a new cd coming out don't you yeah, yeah. Um, I plan to do some more gigs out there as well. Um, recently, I, I have been thinking to uh, get my daughter out there so we can record uh, a CD together also. 
you know, now she's getting older, she's 15 and she's found her, her voice. And, um, it'd be great for us to do, um, uh, a nice album together. And she, does, she has a beautiful voice. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Very strong. And, and she definitely, you can hear the passion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Of singing yes. in her voice. So yes. it really is a great way for her to express herself. And what a bonding for you two to have. It is. It, it never goes away. It's something that we've, um, we've uh, enjoyed ever since she was three and a half, four years old. Wow, that long. Yeah. Um, Martin, it's always a pleasure to have you on and... Again, you are available on Facebook. You're available on CD Baby for your albums. Yes. Um, you can find your music also on YouTube. Correct. Uh, now, is it martinspencemusic.com? Um, yes. So, there's so many ways for people to enjoy your wonderful music and to buy it and... Keep and you know, what? you know, I always make myself available. Also, uh, anyone has questions, uh, comments, uh, I always try to answer and uh, make myself available to everyone. You know, uh, as much as possible. Which is very true. Um, it last minute. If I say, "Hey, Martin, can you come on?" Um, you you always make the time for me, and <laughs> it's it's a blessing both ways. Um, I I absolutely love having you on and having these very casual conversations with you but also it's also wonderful to play your music and get your name out there so thank you i thank you very much no um, thank you so we are going to take a break and we will be right back this is Abstract Illusions Radio with your host, Jennifer Hillman. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Abstract Illusions Radio, where we are speaking with musician Martin Spence. And during the little break, I had asked Martin if he had had any experience with past lives and he mentioned he actually to me that he'd actually written a song similar to like the feeling of a past life and it's called seeing you so martin um what about the situation just really made you want to write a song about it Mm. well um you know this is uh really very interesting because um this was a uh Secondhand story, basically, Mm -hmm. uh, that was told to me. And, uh, you know, this person just really uh, had a a minor conflict with this issue of of, uh, feeling like he had uh, lived another life. You know, it really went against what he uh, was taught to believe and what he believed, you know, uh, religiously and spiritually. And... um, but he always felt this pull, you know, as he told me the story, he always felt this pull that um, he didn't belong where he was, you know, that he belonged somewhere else. Um, and as the years went by and he got older, he um, he kind of gave up on the idea on on, uh, on this whole past life thing, you know. There was a woman involved, obviously, and someone that he recognized in, in, uh, in these, these uh, memories that he had. And that's how he can describe them. There were memories. There weren't dreams. Um, but one day, um, this person just walked through the door, he said. And uh, he was able to recognize her and uh, basically shared with her eventually in time um, the his memories of her, you know. And uh, it was very interesting. And this song really... Uh, is about that because I really felt that I really felt what he was telling me. It was genuine, and he was was really telling me uh, uh you know something uh, intimate, you know. Um, 
So he mentioned the responses that he got from her. Uh, you know, it was hard to believe, but yet she felt she understood and she was sad that she didn't remember things of that nature. And, you know, the question came up, what do we do now? And uh, he told me he responded basically nothing. We, we go on living knowing that uh, this, you know, at least for him, this was real and it was true. And he was glad that basically it came to the point that it did. It, you know? it felt like probably um, a completion of some, some type. Yes, exactly. And also confirmation he's not crazy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. True, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. In my business, I get a lot of people that say, you know, I saw this people, th this person, I feel so drawn to him. Are they a soulmate? It's, and it's like, to me, there's there's some level of recognition with everybody we meet. And then there's some yeah. that we have made that promise yeah. to really find them in another lifetime. Exactly. Um, I mean, there's movies about it um, that are, are out there and they're beautiful love stories. And I feel for your friend, it's, it's not an easy thing to live with. And I, I had a dream myself when I was 13, and mine was a vision dream um, of a certain person, um, childhood invisible friend, and broke off with and became more, you know, socialized, shall we say, mm -hmm. and lost that magical connection when you're a little kid. But this guy was in this dream, and um, very much like a great friend, but he was it was kind of like the bar scene that we'd always meet. So he was the bartender <laughs> and I'm on the other side. So was, there was always some kind of separation yes. between us. So, I mean, the metaphors within that dream, but as time went on and I, I really recognized who this person really was in real life and this spiritual connection is, is there again. And he's like a great friend that I can talk to, but I, you know, at this point, do I feel like there is something more? He's a great friend. Exactly. I, 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 he used, he's like my muse. We were talking about muses. He definitely brings out a lot of different elements of my poetic nature. Yeah. He really helps me use and express myself and gives me that push to, to do it. So he's like that great friend who's always there. Yes. Um, and and you know it, you feel it, and you you can't dismiss it. And with this this element right now, where a lot of of um, spiritually with the shifting and parallel lives, you can't say that really fast. I know you uh, can't. <laughs> but they're collapsing, so a lot of people are in, like really connecting with all their different lives that are happening at the same time in the same timeline so you're going to have those moments where you really have a recognition with somebody and it's it's nice to know that you're writing a song about the frustration and confusion and um yeah like what do we do with this and yeah. and but to me it's it's very interesting situation you know and it's and it's it's sad and and beautiful at the same time as he uh, went on and, and uh, shared with me you know uh, some similarities of things that still happened for example uh, he mentioned that she would collect wildflowers yellow flowers and put them by the window represented hope um, and things like that and the color dress that she wore and uh, you know when he told her these things um, she responded and said, "Well, I, I, um, I like wildflowers, and I, and it's the specific color too, you know. And I put them around the house, and and I have a dress that represents hope, and uh, uh, the color green, you know, all those things. And and uh, you know, he was just like very uh, blown away with it too, you know, because that more confirmed it for him also that wow, okay, this I'm not just crazy." Mm -hmm. and, and it really is I mean I, I literally can nights and nights and nights in tears thinking dear God I've lost my mind um, yeah. and yet there's so many synchronicities and so many things you know um, 
that happen that you get that little push like maybe I'm not crazy um, and and I congratulate your friend for actually meeting the person <laughs> uh, my situation has not come to fruition that way but yet I've really um, kind of accept it is what it is and it is a gift of truly understanding the oneness and infinity and how everything is overlapping everything fits perfectly um, and there is an overall plan that we might not understand that's right that is right and and the power of the promise in yeah. the vow yeah you know and um, sometimes we're pulled towards something you know where we have this uh, tug not yeah. to do this or to go here and, and we don't know why you know and we think we always say to ourselves but why do I feel the need to go here why do I feel the need to be there uh, or to do this you know and and there's something else you know and I think uh, sometimes we we fight against it and other times we let ourselves go with it um, who knows what will happen in each time I don't know <laughs> It, it definitely does happen, and if it strikes you, you need to do it then. Don't yeah. hesitate. Um, I hesitated, and I was a day late. Mm. Um, so it's like I, I, I just can so relate to the people who call me with um, this problem. It's just like you do get that pull, and you get to um, understand. It's like when I was actually going through this man's hometown and I didn't even know I was in his town um, but boy did I feel it my heart chakra opened for the first time as wide as a universe I'd never felt such a feeling in my entire life and I knew <laughs> I belonged in that place right. and it was on the other side of the country um, so it's it's very interesting how um, and this is becoming more and more common and and people just kind of in many ways dismiss it exactly. but you, you really count it as a blessing and don't repress it and let it inspire you yeah because I think you know the the not knowing um, is what uh, really haunts you for for you know the, your entire life mm -hmm. and um, some people get to to put closure to that and some people, you know, they, they, they may come together and realize that just, you know, it's just just another time, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, and, and that's it. And, and you, you go your own way. Um, but I think it just helps with, uh, with putting closure to something, you know. And um, so, yeah, so that inspired this song, Seeing You. And uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, I hold it close to my heart. And, and we can understand. So we hope you all will enjoy Seeing You by Martin Spence.
complicated life Seeing you in another life Wow, what a song. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's there, to me, it feels like there's a story within a story within a story in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> there, you know, there, I, I think there is. Yeah, definitely. Lots, and it's just so beautifully written. I applaud you. Thank you. Um, it, it's something that I think a lot of people can definitely relate to. So as you um, were writing this, did it make you wonder about past lives and other lives and about yourself and the connection even between you and Alana? Because you guys really connected really quickly yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and we were just talking not too long ago and Elena was telling me that... uh, you know, that um, if I was struggling with something, that she would feel it, you know, that she would feel it. Um, and even though she uh, didn't say much at times, um, I, I, I felt that she was always there, that she was near, you know. Um, but I, I, I wonder, and, and I wonder what the ramifications would be, you know, um, for for two people to truly recognize each other, I think. Most of the time, it might be just one person, you know, um, especially if there's memories involved. You know, one yeah. thing is to say, I, I know you from somewhere and, 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 and I remember you, but I don't. Another thing is to have memories. You uh, know? Yeah. And um, that changes everything. And, and uh, I guess if we're not, we don't have our feet on the ground, I think we can make many mistakes. Yeah. You yes. know, <laughs> we can be foolish hearted. And, uh, and we, we, you know, yeah. So. Well, it's, you got to be spontaneous, but you still got to keep your feet on the ground. Of course. Of course. Um, but it, it's very interesting. Once one door opens, for me, I know of many, many, many past lives with this guy. And when I would, I mean, I'd be sitting at the desk and all of a sudden this, this event would happen and I'm reliving it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was... You know, there was always that missed opportunity because someone wasn't spontaneous. Somebody didn't take that leap for the other person. Um, they didn't trust the other person. And, and I think that's one reason why people do come back together to say, yes, I really did love you. And I really yeah. did want to be with you. Um, yeah. and, and something always gotten away it's it's like for me it's like that bar there's always there always seemed to be that one degree away from really having the true love story and it, hmm. it just continues it on but at the same time it's it's magical in the pursuit um some people like the chase i'm getting really tired of it myself but <laughs> you know i've i've just gotten to the point that i appreciate the little signs I get from him in the physical. So, um, but as your friend probably realizes, you know, there is that air of respecting the other person's privacy in their current life. Correct. So you have to kind of keep things on the download about things. And yeah, you know, you have to be a a mature adult and respectful. Um, because this is now is not then. And yeah. um, you just you just have to have both feet on the ground, really. Yeah. You know? and, and really, it it can really throw you over the edge. And I've had many people who've gone really obsessive. Yes. And you know, I think that's part of you hear of fans that you know they're, they're the stalkers, but it's just I think a lot of them, it's just they have this remembrance that. They want what happened in the past, and it hasn't happened. Correct. So they, they try and make it happen. And you can't force this. There is a divine uh-huh. timing for everything. And for your friend, Correct. it happened. Yeah. For me, I, you know, I just want a cup of coffee with a guy. But, you know, <laughs> I don't think I'm asking too much. No. Um, 
and in in good time um and i think it's it's like you said um i fully remember and i think he wants to remember like the woman in the, it but yet not it's like there's something there but not <laughs> quite sure that i'm not really crazy um, true. so we have an understanding you know yeah. you know spiritually it's there we're all connected to so many people and it's very interesting more and more there is an enlightenment going on that you can apologize to someone even if they're not there just in the air like but if it's heartfelt they'll get it yeah i believe so um, it's like a lot of feeling when you were struggling. Yeah. Um, there's often times that I would just pop into your life and say, okay, what's going on? Something's up. Yeah. And, and you, when you really have a good friendship and a real connection, um, and I do wonder about, you know, I, I know we had to be brother or sister in a past <laughs> life because it's just like we had to be family. It's true. It's just, it was automatic with us. The yes. minute we met, we just yeah. connected so comfortably. It was. Um, so it really is, it's fun. It's fun, um, but a beautiful, beautiful song. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you. So what other suggestions did your friend or realizations did your friend get from this situation that might help other people who are going through it? I think that um, you know you, you you take a chance if if uh, you're going to tell someone right. I think that uh, you don't know the reaction, but you you I think first you have to develop a a uh, trust a trusting relationship with that person to feel that okay they're not going to think I'm crazy probably right. So I think that uh, and that's what he did. He developed a, a trusting relationship to the point where he could share this information and know that she wasn't going to go nuts <laughs> and think, whoa, you've lost it somewhere, you know. Right. So she was very, very receptive and, and acknowledged some of the things that he meant, the details he mentioned that, that are part of her life now, that she does certain things that she does. She still does them now. <laughs> and, and there is overlapping of certain things. It's like... Yeah. For me, the dream I had when I was 13 and the guy was a bartender in this lifetime, he was a bartender yeah. for a while. So there is that overlapping of reliving as a parts of your life again because, number one, it wasn't complete. And number yeah. two, uh, you had so much fun you wanted to do it again. Yes, exactly. And, you know, I think keeping it real. I think he kept it very real and uh, not made it so mysterious, but... Uh, you know, and, and very light. I think he kept it very light too. Mm-hmm. So, and there's they they still they still talk. They're still friends. And, and that's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, but he definitely feels it. You know, when she gives him a hug, he he, he can feel all that energy. You know, but um, it's interesting, and I thought it was pretty interesting. It it definitely um, opens the heart in a whole different way yep and and the energy these days is very much about love and open your heart to love and um but not being desperate or forceful it's it's right just let it unfold because that's that's where you really build the solid foundation that's right on it so so true it's so true but yeah so it's uh it had a good ending for him. He feels good. <laughs> feels good. Awesome. Yeah. And and what does he feel about the song when he heard it? Um, it was moving for him, you know, um, because I was able to put what he felt, you know. Um, like I said before, I mentioned the secret thoughts that people have. So I, I kind of uh, used his feelings, <laughs> basically to write this so uh yeah he felt wow that's 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 me and he know. wasn't was he upset at all that you you kind of exposed his secret thoughts no not really not really he no because he figured that this song can go many different ways too you know it could uh it could become part of someone's dialogue <laughs> right <laughs> you never know <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> it's true but it's good 
Yes, and it is a beautiful song. Again, the name of the song is Seeing You. And we are talking with Mark and Spence. One again, you can get in touch with Martin on martinspencemusic.com. You can get his music on CD Baby. And you can find him on Facebook. Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah. I mean, he's he's out there. And he's open to conversations. And, you know, it, it might be interesting if, if you have an experience yeah. with a, this kind of thing. I would love to hear it. You can contact me at jen at Um Definitely, I would love to hear those stories, and I'm sure Martin would as well. Yes, um, because it's like sharing it. It it everybody needs that support through it. Um, I definitely, I when I was talking to certain people, they just like, uh huh, sure, Jen. Yes, right, <laughs> right, um, exactly. But you know, it in time they they saw clues. Like you know, it happens. Anyway, yes. so Martin, again, thank you for the wonderful music. You My pleasure. Your wonderful time. It's awesome to always have you on thank you. the show. It's a pleasure to be here all the time. And with this, this is Jennifer Hellman for Abstract Illusion saying, with each breath of air, we hope you gain new insights, imagination, and inspirations. Have a good week. <laughs>